All right, welcome back. Now let's just quickly go, and uh, I'd like to complete this chapter, this class. So, okay, there are different kinds of tongues, and it is the same Holy Spirit that releases these different kinds of tongues. Now, why are there different kinds of tongues? There are different kinds of tongues for service and operation. Okay, so let's look at these different kinds of tongues. Remember, the whole, it is the same Holy Spirit. Now, just because I can speak in a certain way of, of speaking in tongues doesn't mean this is a better way than that. Just like the gifts doesn't mean prophecy is better than word of knowledge. All are the same in God's eyes, right? So they come from the same source. Number one, five different ways. Tongues as a spiritual prayer language. This is available for all believers. The moment we are believers, we can pray for the gift of tongues, right? So all of us, for, as believers, for personal prayer, we can pray in tongues. And we can ask for it. Say, God, I want to baptize me with your Holy Spirit that I can pray in tongues. And we step out. Rem remember, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit are released through faith. It is a step of faith that we must take, right? Whether it is praying in tongues, whether it is prophecy, word of knowledge, working of miracles, the gift of faith, whatever gift it is, all gifts are released by faith. So maybe some of us here, we are desiring to pray in tongues, right? It, it is a step of faith. To believe that the Holy Spirit will do it. He will speak. Now, just because it doesn't happen the first time, the fifth time, the 20th time, the 100th time, doesn't mean it won't happen. Remember? Abraham, God gave him the promise, you'll be a father to many nations. How long he waited? 25 years. But he walked in faith through all those years, right? So every manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit is a step of faith. We release it through faith, okay? Then is the tongues for interpretation. Now, some of us may have the gift of tongues of interpretation. That's not, it's not common, but this is a gift that's available where somebody else is speaking in a tongue, and we may understand it. So for example, you're praying, somebody begins to pray in tongues. And we're all believers. Everyone are praying in tongues. But there's one person who's praying in tongues, and you understand, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to understand what that person is praying. It's a supernatural thing. That person may be praying for you know, something that is happening in a different country. But God may give us the ability to understand that. Right? The tongues of, for interpretation. Then there is tongues for deep intercessional groanings of the Spirit. Romans 8.26. Let's read that. Romans 8 and verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps, helpeth us, helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we thought, but the Spirit him itself maketh intercession for us with groanings with, which cannot be uttered. Yeah. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Pastor, like uh, when we are praying with understanding, we are very limited uh, yeah. to our understanding. Yeah. Uh, we might not have fully full understanding of the situation or the anything that we are praying for. Can we ask the Holy Spirit uh, as to like to lead us in in speaking in tongues? Can we request the Holy Spirit to speak for that specific uh, thing or uh, the, whatever we are praying for? For example, we are praying for our church. 
and we are not fully aware of things that are happening. But can we ask the Holy Spirit? I'm um, speak for uh, pray for the church in tongues. Yes, we can ask the Holy Spirit to do that. But remember, as we pray now, for example, we are praying for AP APC, right? All of us in the church, we are in the church, we're praying. Okay, prayer point is giving, we're praying for APC. Right? Lord, bless the church, open doors for us. That's the prayer that we want to make. Now, I am praying this prayer, and you may be praying in tongues. In your mind, we are praying for APC as a church. But the Holy Spirit, remember, our mind is unfruitful. The Holy Spirit may take that opportunity and pray for something else that or reveal something else that you've been praying for for the past three years right of course we can ask the holy spirit to pray give us uh, you know we're praying for this church we're praying for the things ahead but he can he can use that prayer time when you're praying in tongues he may use that to pray for another church in a different country is it a waste it's not a waste still it is the Holy Spirit that is interceding on your behalf. Right? But you may be thinking, we may be thinking, okay, we're praying for this, but he may be praying for completely, maybe the government of uh, New Zealand. We don't know. So that's where it, may, it, it says our mind is unfruitful, but we can ask that. Right? So something we do in church, we have the prayer points. We say, go ahead and pray in tongues. It's now not a waste. The Holy Spirit can use that to pray for things in the church, but he can use it to pray for something completely different. So we are not in control of that. Right? Okay. Romans 8, 26. Deep intercessional groanings of the Spirit. Yeah, we read it, right? In the same, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. In our weakness, we cannot pray. But the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf with groans we cannot express. We cannot understand those groanings. Deep. You know, Paul writes, he when you know he his he was burdened in his spirit. Deep intercessional groanings. The Holy Spirit can put a burden into your heart, in your spirit, and it can become such a groaning inside. That's what happened to Jeremiah. If you read the Old Testament, you read the prophet, the story of Jeremiah, he had a big task ahead of him. Right? He was a young man. He had a big task ahead of him. Uh -huh. But there was this deep burden that the holy spirit put so there's a there's a some there's a speaking in tongues that god the holy spirit can release for certain matters as well right like deep intercessional groanings in the spirit so for example uh you know you may be burdened for uh our nation of india where there is persecution to churches now the Holy Spirit can use that burden and make deep intercessional groanings on that on that on that point, right? For persecution in our nation. Deep. Now, as he's doing that, now on our own strength, how long can we pray for our nation in terms of persecution? Five minutes? Lord, bless the pastors, Lord. They're going through difficulties, they're going through challenges here in Bangalore. Everything is good. They're so comfortable, but Lord, they, they have children, they have families, they don't have finances, they are beaten up, they're put into prison, they can't serve faithfully, they're going through so much problem, Lord, please help them. Maximum 10 minutes we can pray. The Holy Spirit can take this point and make you pray for two hours at a stretch for the same thing. Why? Because he's doing deep intercessional groanings in your spirit. You get you get it, right? Fourthly, tongues as a sign to the believer. Sorry, to the unbeliever. First Corinthians fourteen verse twenty-two. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for the unbelievers, but for those who believe. 
Yeah, yeah. So tongues are a sign for the believers, unbelievers, sorry. So let me give you an example. There was this one man, uh, I remember I read this story, right? It's a very beautiful uh, story that happened. This happened in the West. Uh, uh, there was this Jewish man who did not believe in Jesus as the Messiah. He is a Jew, right? This happened a couple of years back. He believes in the Old Testament. He's waiting for the Messiah. He's a proper Jew. So he had come to a meeting. He wanted to know what is happening. What, what do these Christians think? What, what is their perception of the Messiah? So he went to this meeting. And after the meeting, the pastor said, OK, let's all spend a few minutes in prayer. And they all began to pray in tongues. Now, after the entire thing, this man was weeping and crying. Someone came to him and asked him, what happened? Well, why are you crying? What, what, what's happening? Why are you so, uh, did God touch you? Did God heal you? Did God do a miracle in your life? He said, no. So he, gave, he said, I didn't believe in the Messiah. I didn't believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But as towards the end, you all started praying, this person who was standing next to uh, somewhere around spoke in fluent Aramaic. And in Aramaic, he was praying that Jesus is the Messiah and he died on the cross and he will come. He was basically praying the gospel or speaking the gospel and saying that Jesus is the Messiah in, in fluent Aramaic. Now, this guy is born and brought up in America. He doesn't know Aramaic and all. But this person came as an unbeliever to the church. He heard this, and this he's speaking in Aramaic, proclaiming that Jesus is the Messiah. And as an unbeliever, he went out of the church as a believer. No healing, no deliverance, nothing. It was only this thing that changed his life. And this is happening in many places. So if you bring it to an Indian context, Imagine I'm in Orissa and I'm saying, okay, everyone, let's pray in tongues. I'm beginning to pray in tongues and suddenly I start speaking Odia. And in Odia, I'm sharing the gospel. Now, some person who's going on the road comes, hears it, becomes a believer, becomes a sign for a believer. Can God do it? He can. Right? Finally, the fifth one, the ministry gift of tongues, 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28. And God has appointed these in church first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, after that, miracles, then the gifts of healings, helps, administration, various of tongues. Yeah. Give, gives, gifts of administration and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. So God can release the gift of speaking in tongues, which is a separate gift. All of us can get that gift, right? The gift of tongues. Uh, and this, this will enable us as believers to do many things. Now, here's the thing. The way tongues flow, the purpose is to serve and to be effective for the kingdom of God. Tongues could also be categorized or classified on their benefits, right? So for example, we have these different kinds of tongues. The main purpose should not be forgotten, to glorify God. Just because I can interpret tongues, just because I can speak in tongues for a longer time, just because I can sing in tongues, it doesn't give me the opportunity to walk in pride. This is exactly what happened to the church in Corinth. In Corinth. They were flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. They had working of miracles, prophecy, words of knowledge, gift of faith. Everything was there, but they had pride. I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. I follow Peter. Who's better than these three? 
then they had pride in the way they looked at things that were happening in the church, the way they partook of the Lord's table, pride. So we must be very careful. Our desire, yes, we desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We desire the gifts, but it is not the gifts that we will be known for. We will be known for who we are and what we are doing in ministry. That's why I was just sharing with the second years as well. Our works will be judged by fire. First Corinthians chapter 3, I think, right? Yes, chapter 3. Our works will be tested by fire. Now, I may think, for example, I've done 500 miracles. I go up to heaven and I stand before Jesus. Okay, Lord, I've done 500 miracles. The Lord says, hold on, Paul, let's just test it by fire. He tested by fire. He says, yeah, you did 500 miracles, but only 100 was one which you really believed and you really prayed for. Others, I didn't. So you will get rewarded for 100 miracles. 400 is not on your tab. We are rewarded. We are tested. Our rewards are tested by fire. So if I have all of these gifts and everything, and if I walk in pride, God is going to test it by fire, and he'll say, Sorry, that's not counted because it didn't give, it didn't bring me glory. You took the glory for that. It didn't give glory to God. So that is not counted. Right? So always go back to why these gifts are given to us. Right? Okay, just a few questions. Can every believer pray in tongues? Yes. Why? On what, ba on what basis can we say that every believer pray, can pray in tongues? Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And these signs will flow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out the demons, they will mm. speak with new tongues. These signs will follow those who finish Bible college. Those who? believe they will cast out demons speak in new tongues very simple every believer can flow in it right the promise of the holy spirit is for everyone now remember the 120 people who were there praying many of them saw jesus maybe some of them didn't even see jesus but they all were there gentiles jews everyone mixed and god poured out the holy spirit on everyone God and did, the Lord Jesus is so wonderful. He didn't say, okay, now I'm going to pour out the Holy Spirit. Gentiles, put your hands up. You go stand little that side. Jews, come to the left. So more of the anointing will fall on the left, medium on the right. You got to do that? All 120 were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues. So this is a promise for everyone. And then thirdly, because of the admonition concerning spiritual gifts, the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit comes with, He's willing to give it to us. Remember, God is not a God of favoritism. He gives to all of us equally. The more we desire Him, the more He, he gives. He's like a dove. He's gentle. He's not going to force Himself on us. Now, I have a choice. I can be a believer, say, God, thank you, no hell and all. After I die, I'll come and be with you. I'm more than happy. Nothing wrong in that. But then I can say, Lord, you made me a believer now. I believe in you, but I need to tell others. So for that, I need the baptism of your Holy Spirit. I need your power. I need your anointing. So I'm going to read your word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do all of this because you have called me for this. That's the second way of looking at things. He's not going to force. He's not going to force a person to do something. For example, we are all here. He's not going to force you to wake up early in the morning to pray. Or he's not going to force you to read the Bible. It is a choice. Right? He's not going to force us. But he woos us. He will, the Holy Spirit will lead us to it. Get up, pray. Get up, read your word. Or don't say this. Don't say, you know. Uh, let me share this. There are many, many times I've been with people. We are talking. 
and the Holy Spirit has told me, go from here, I don't want you to listen to this. I've said, excuse me, and I've walked out. People have thought I've been very rude. Hey, he's very rude. Too much of pride. It's okay. Doesn't matter to me. Because I was obedient to the Holy Spirit. Very gently I said. Now, I didn't tell them, see, Holy Spirit is telling you, you're all talking wrong things, so I have to go. No. I said, excuse me, I need to go. My aim and my goal in life is not to please everyone. Yes, as a pastor, I should be considerate. I need to learn to train up people, teach them, all of that. But my responsibility is to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Right? First yeah. Corinthians 12, 28. And God has set some in the church. Again, the fivefold ministry. Sorry, not the fivefold ministry. First apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity in tongues. All believers can teach the word, but does not mean that all believers who teach have been set in the church in the ministry appointment of a teacher. Now, think of this. Let me give you this example. Can all of us teach the word of God? Yes, right? We all can uh, take a topic, grace, mercy, faith, anything we can teach. That is the gift that God has given us. But then there is a ministry function where God will choose a person and he will say, you will become a teacher of the word of God. Now there comes a greater responsibility. So as a teacher, he will have to spend time sitting, reading, looking at history, geography, science, everything possible, reading other sources, other materials, and teaching is basically what God has called him for. Now, God may have called me to start a business, but I like to teach. So can I teach? Yes, I can teach. So you have the gift, you have the function. Right? And these are two different things. For example, right, we've seen the great evangelist Billy Graham. There's a, there's a calling upon his life. When you, look, when you say Billy Graham, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? What is it? Sorry? When you say Billy Graham, Dr. Billy Graham, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Preacher, okay. Evangelist. The first thing that should come to my mind is he was the greatest, one of the greatest evangelists. He's not a pastor. He's not a, he was not a great, profound teacher. If you, if you listen to his sermons, everything was about, you know, miracles, so very simple sermons. But why is it that when he preaches, thousands of people will come? It was a, it was a gift. It's something that God has placed in his life. Now, there may be pastors and uh, you know, others here, when we call for evangelistic meeting, you may be deep in a village in India. 100 people come and sit. Same place, same stage. If it was Billy Graham, at least 5,000 people would have come. What is the difference? Same village. People will come from other states to attend Billy Graham's meeting. I remember many years ago it happened in. You know, and uh, one of the evangelists came here and people came from all over India to attend that meeting. Why? So that's a certain kind of a calling that, that there is, right? All believers can pray in Jesus' name for miracles and healing, but does not mean that all believers who pray for miracles and healings have been appointed of, with miracles and gifts of healing. Now, some of you here may have, you know, example, you're in the hostel, one person, hey, I've got stomach pain. Come stand here, I'll pray for you. So you put your hand on him, pray. And he comes back, hey, I'm feeling better. Wonderful. But then there's another, God can use somebody else with the, you know, with the appointment of healing. Meaning, there's somebody who has, you know, the worst brain disease or whatever disease, most complicated disease. For him, it's like a stomach pain. It doesn't matter. Because he's walking in a different level of anointing there. You understand? Right? So there, for him, he's like, okay, no problem, I'll pray. He prayed, and he receives his healing. 
all of us can teach, but not all are appointed to the ministry of teaching. All of us can bring healing, pray for healing in Jesus' name, but not all of us are appointed for that. All of us have gifts, but not all of us are appointed to uh, be in certain, you know, uh, governments and meaning uh, uh, administration. Not all of us may be called for that. Example: I cannot be an administrator. Uh, okay, this is this is this is the time we start. This is the time we end. After that, we no. I'm very bad at all that. You give me the schedule, I'll follow it. Right. Of course, there are times in the church where we will have to make decisions and all of that. But we raise up leaders who are good in that administration side. So if at APC East, uh, all locations at APC, something that we follow in East especially is, you know, we've raised up leaders who look after everything. So when I go to church on Sunday morning, I don't have to do anything much. All I have to do is give the projector to them. Everything is set up. Ready? After the church, people come, stand for prayer. I begin to, we begin to pray for everyone. By the time we finish praying, already all the equipment is gone. It's gone to the storeroom, cleared. And somebody else is removing the books. Everything is looked after. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to tell them anything. Now, without them, it's very difficult. Right? So can I pray in tongues at any time I want to? Or should I only be in the church? Yes or no? Where should I? Can I pray anywhere? Anytime? Very good. Can I pray in the 15 minute break? Just joking. Okay, do I need to scream, shout, shake, and be weird while praying in tongues? Why? The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I can be standing and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, yet none of you can experience it, none of you can see it. It's just there. I don't have to scream. I don't have to say one minute, Holy Spirit is talking to me. Or I don't have to clap, go there, shout and scream, and then come back and say, oh, Holy Spirit spoke to me. No. It can be very quiet, very simple. It's a deposit from the Spirit of God into our spirit. Deposit. Can I pray in tongues in church when we all are gathered? Together, can we pray in tongues in church? Yes, right. But we also should be mindful of who's around us, right? When we are around believers who know what is happening, it's fine. But when we are in a group of unbelievers, those who don't know about speaking in tongues, you can continue speaking to the Lord by yourself in quietness. So, for example, many times, uh, you know, we go for campuses college campuses right and we share the we share a message there we have worship we share a message within 45 minutes we close so it doesn't mean i go there now in church my preaching is very different but when i go to college campuses preaching is very different i can't preach like how i preach in church i can't say amen hallelujah praise the lord like if i say all that what they'll say They'll be staring at you. What praise the Lord? Now, I must understand where I am. In church, I can do that. But in college campuses, there are unbelievable. Imagine I go up. See, after church, we say, okay, let's all rise up. Ministry time. Just pray in tongues. Receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Imagine I go to college campus and say, okay, come on. Let's all rise up. Those of you who are Christians who pray in tongues, start speaking in tongues. Now, imagine these unbelievers sitting around there. Those who have no idea what's happening, it's not going to be fruitful for them. It's better if I can speak five minutes of something that can touch their lives and minister to them than speak half an hour speaking in tongues and they don't know what's happening. That's what Paul says. Later on, that's what he's trying to explain to the church. I would rather speak a few meaningful words than speak only, speak only in tongues, even though I speak in tongues more than any one of you. That's what Paul says. So basically what he's saying is, when you're outside with unbelievers, don't sit and pray in tongues. 
use that time to speak something that can minister to the other person. But when we go to college campuses, sometimes what we do is we're just waiting. OK, you know, everything that's happening, there's time to go on the stage. There's 10, 15 minutes. In my spirit, I'm praying in tongues, saying, Holy Spirit, now I'm going to go on stage. Help me to speak the right things. I've prepared the sermon. I've prepared the points. right? And then I begin to speak in tongues quietly in my spirit. Nobody knows. Right? My eyes can be open. My eyes can be closed. It's all right. But I'm praying in tongues. right? Nobody knows. Then I can go on stage and share the message. Right? Can I pray in tongues? OK, that's done. The wonderful benefits of praying in tongues, quickly. Praying without boundaries, praying the mysteries of God. That's powerful. Praying without boundaries. There's no limit. Right now, where are you seat seated? First year BC, APC Bible College, Kotunur, Bangalore, Karnataka, India. For God, there is no limit. You can be in APC Bible College, Kotunur, Karnataka, Bangalore, India, and pray for China or Russia. You can pray for the prime minister of another country. There is no boundaries to the Holy Spirit. Two, praying according to God's perfect will. Remember that when we pray in tongues, we are praying according to God's will. Will the Holy Spirit pray something that is not his will? Praying according to God's will. So we can be assured. It's like this. You know, as little kids, we would, my parents, my dad would drop us to school. And two of us will sit at the back. Now, are you going to go keep asking your fa father? Are you taking me to school? Do you know the way? Did you, will you say that? He knows he's your father. He's going to take you to school. You don't have to tell him the way to school. He knows the way. Now imagine every day you sit on that bike and you tell your father, are you going to school now? Are you going to school now? Are you dropping us to school? What will the father say? He'll take the belt and whack us. One more time you ask, that's it for you. It's obviously 8 o'clock in the morning. Where am I going with your school uniform? You're going to school. I know the way. I'll take you. Don't worry. So we are comfortable. And I remember my, me and my brother will sit at the back. We won't be worried. Whether we are late, early, it doesn't matter. Father is taking us. Very simple. If we are late, it's not my problem. Father, father brought me late. Call up. Come, we are late. We stand near the gate. Please open the gate. No, we're not open. You're late. My father will come. Open the gate. We got stuck in traffic. OK, go in. Done. When we pray, we are praying according to the Father's will. We can never go wrong. We are not glorifying anybody else, but we are glorifying Jesus. Thirdly, it helps us overcome the weakness of the flesh. Oh, is our flesh weak? By nature, our flesh is weak. But when we pray in the Spirit, we overcome the weakness of the flesh. I'm not saying don't take rest. Very important. Rest is very important. Right? Get good rest. Get good sleep. Right? Saturdays or Saturday evenings or after church, I don't do anything. I do one thing. Sleep. Go eat a nice lunch and sleep. I'll tell everyone at home, you all scream, you all do what you want. And they all know. Sat Sunday. Then I wake up, I go play football with my boys, play some games. So I'm not saying don't take rest. You assign times for prayer. So in, then Monday to Friday, they know. Dad has got his own timings. He wakes up, he goes, he comes. I, we don't know. The schedule is different. So in my mind, it's like a clock. Monday to Saturday, this is how it is. Sunday morning. Get up, pray, everything, go to church. After that, something changes. Then night comes, I begin to pray, Monday starts. So then my clock is goes back. Okay, Monday starts. So then, okay, wake up, 3 a.m. 
Monday morning, 3 a.m., get up, pray, get ready, get the kids to school, do what you have to do the entire week. Right? So it helps us in our weaknesses when we pray in tongues. There's personal edification. We are rested and refreshed. Imagine that. We are rested and we are refreshed. You know, imagine it's a hot, it's hot outside. You played a one hour game of soccer. Then you go have a hot shower. How do you feel? Refreshed. That's how the Holy Spirit is when we pray in tongues. You may have the whole day tired. Very tiring day. Physically tiring, mentally draining. You know, for me, sometimes the whole day I have to look at the laptop. Whole day. Whole day working on the laptop. Eyes pain, head pains, everything pains. You just want to rest. You go home, you close your eyes, you want to rest. And sometimes we just pray in tongues. All of a sudden, that pain is gone, eye pain is gone, headache is gone. You feel like you've slept for seven, eight hours. You're feeling refreshed. That's what the Holy Spirit can do. Right? The Holy Spirit praying in the tongues is another way to praise and magnify God. It enables your spirit to receive the mysteries of God for your own life. Right? Imagine you're praying in tongues. You receive the mysteries of God for your own life. God begins to speak. Often, the meaning of what you are saying is conveyed to your own spirit as you are praying. You're praying in tongues. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you what you must do for your personal life, for your future, and he can give you ideas on how to go about doing it. Some of you said you wanted to start a church. So you can be praying in tongues. God can give you an idea. He can open up a picture for you. He will say, okay, here's what you do. You go to this place. You go and speak to this owner. You speak to this owner. You take this hall. The hall is, is in this area in your hometown. Now, Holy Spirit knows everything. Don't ask the Holy Spirit, how you know my area? He knows. He knows the owner of that house also. Go to the hall. Go to speak to the owner. Take that hall and begin the church. All of it can, he can convey to you in two minutes. In two minutes, what we are praying for 10 years, he can reveal it in two minutes. God, should I start a church? I don't know whether I should start. 10 years we are praying. In two minutes, the Holy Spirit can reveal how to start it and when to start it. He can just reveal it in a moment. Right? Finally, he helps stirs the gifts of God within us. Right? Uh, the gifts of God can be the spiritual gifts and also the natural gifts that we God has given us. He stirs it up. So some of us are musically gifted. But the Holy Spirit will stir us up. He'll say, learn this song. Learn this. Or why don't you write some song? He stirs the gifts in us. Right? And finally, question seven. Should I pray a lot in tongues? Should I pray in tongues a lot? Why? So all of these are the benefits. Right? So I want to encourage you. Press on with the gift of praying in tongues. Now, many of us may have prayed. We've not received it yet. It's all right. Don't be discouraged. Right? Keep going at it. Keep pressing on. Hold on in faith. Trust God. Believe God that he will reveal it, release his gifts. See, the point is it's for all of us as believers. Right? So you can claim it. You can say, God, you said it's for all of us. So. I want to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me step out in faith. Right? Any questions? Okay, let's close in prayer. Father, we want to thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us through your word. And Lord, this is our heart's desire that that we become more closer to you, that we draw closer to you, God, by your Holy Spirit. And even as we have learned the gift of speaking in tongues and the various other gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray that you will enable us to walk in these gifts, empower us, strengthen us, O oh God. Lead us, Father. Teach us to pray in tongues. Teach us to 
trust in the work of the Holy Spirit, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives, that we will fulfill every plan, every purpose that you have for our lives. We commit each one of us into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, thank you, everyone. God bless. Have a good weekend.